Good morning. Hey, I'm Doug McAllister. I'm pastor at Journey Fellowship Church, and welcome to our podcast. And this is something new that we're doing, and we're getting excited about being able to spend some more time with you and maybe just have conversations with people who are on staff at Journey or uh, ministries that uh, are happening at Journey or just events we want to talk about. Uh, So for the next few minutes, we're going to just hang out. I'm glad you joined us today. Uh, With me today is Ezra Kaysen. Uh, Ezra is on our staff. Uh, he is uh, on his way to getting his credentials to be Pastor uh, Ezra Kaysen the Third. Ezra comes from a long line of pastors. <laughs> yeah, your grandfather was a pastor. Your dad is a pastor, and now you are a pastor. And uh, so I wanted you to meet Ezra today. And, of course, Ezra and Virtus have been a key part of Journey for many years now, and they're beautiful kids. And I kind of want you to hear their story, and we're going to talk about worship. We're going to talk about music. We're going to talk about our favorite cartoon characters. Uh, Ezra loves Doug Funny and Patty Manez. <laughs> we were talking about it earlier, and man, I don't know if they still make that. Do they, are they still making? Uh, no, uh, it's, Doug Funny's I gone. I think it's still in syndication. Is it? I know our kids when they grew up. We watched Doug Funny, and uh, we were talking earlier. You know, we I have five kids, uh, three sons, and none of them are Doug Junior. You are the third, right? So there's a Ezra the first, a Ezra Junior, and a Ezra the third. I'm. One of a kind. I didn't, I didn't have a junior or there's no third. And the reason why is um, Miss Rachel and I decided that Douglas sounds like an old man's name. So we didn't want our kids to pack around an old guy's name. So we gave right. them their own unique name. But that's just a cool name, man. Not only is it biblical, but it's historical in your family. And, you know, and plus, um, like I said just now, Ezra was raised by a preacher who was raised by a preacher. So you're a third-generation PK, man. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about you, Ezra, about your family, where you came from, uh, what God's done in your life. Give us give us a, like a two-minute uh, highlight reel of Ezra Case in the third. Ooh, highlight reel. There were a lot of explosions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. I grew up in – I was born in Tupelo, Mississippi. Grew up in Plantersville, Mississippi. Okay. Tupelo. Yes. Hometown. Uh, not only Ezra Case in the third, but oh who else? Oh, Lord. Elvis Presley. <laughs> hey, maybe that's why you have music in your blood, man. Something about the water in Tupelo. Yeah. Bro. I mean, you and Elvis? Come on, that can't be a coincidence. <laughs> Same small town. I heard I heard that Elvis grew up in uh, an Assembly of God church in Tupelo. Yeah. Is that true? There are some really, really old churches in, yeah, in uh, Tupelo, I Mississippi. I saw a picture of him singing. At a little AG church that somebody said was in Tupelo. I didn't know if that was was that a legend or that was probably no. There, a... there's there's AG churches there. There's yeah. Catholic churches there. Yeah. Which I'm like, oh, I didn't realize we had Catholic churches there. Yeah, but in Tupelo. Yeah, we. Yeah. We, yeah. Is it still a small town? Oh. Ooh. How big is Tupelo? It, Tupelo is probably about sixty thousand people oh, now. Oh wow. Yeah. That's a big town. That's a medium sized yeah. town. Man. It's, it's about 60,000 yeah. people now. Uh, yeah. So, your dad pastors in Tupelo? No, he actually retired because of health issues. Okay, where did he pastor at? Um, he pastored at um, what city? Calvary Baptist, Oklahoma, Mississippi, yeah. and at Spring Hill, Baldwin, Mississippi. Yeah, where did your grandfather pastor? My grandfather pastored at Pine Grove, Shannon, and then he moved to New Zion Missionary Baptist Church, where yeah. I went to in Plantersville, Mississippi. So you are a Baptist boy. Yeah, grew up Baptist. Kind of migrated to the he flipped Pentecostal. Over straight to Apostolic Come on, Pentecostal, man. man. <laughs> so how do you baptize in the name of the Father, the, the Son, the Holy Jesus, Ghost, and, and the Jesus. Holy Ghost, and yeah. the Apostle Paul? Let, yeah, you cover on. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's so well, anyway, so you grew up in Tupelo. Uh, got saved. How old were you? Uh, was 11 years old. Um, yeah. Actually born in Tupelo. Grew up in Plantersville, Mississippi. Yeah. It's it's like a small town right on the, the border of Tupelo. Gotcha. So it's like basically its own little suburb. Yeah. Um, but, Tupelo is a suburb now. Yeah, it has, yeah, it has suburbs to Sweet. it. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Yeah. Um, but grew up there, uh, 11 years old, New Zion Missionary Baptist Church. My grandfather baptized me and a host of my uh, first cousins yeah. um, of his grandkids. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's crazy. What a great heritage, bro. Yeah. And you've been married to Verters for how long? Oh, man. It'll be seven years on September 28th. All right. So the first time I met Ezra was 
2013, I get a phone call out of the blue, and Ezra says, hey, I'm Ezra Kaysen the third. I'm in love with Virtus Camper. And she goes, she, she, Ezra's been, I mean, Virtus has been at Journey for 20-plus years, for a long time. Even when it was Harvest. Yeah, yeah. She, she, she goes she, back she, to the original group. Yeah. Uh, so Ezra said, hey, I want to, I'd like to propose to Virtus, but I want to do it at church on a Sunday morning. And I said, Ezra, are you sure? He said, yeah, I want to do it. I said, I'm willing to roll the dice, man, with you, but are you sure she's going to say yes? Because <laughs> that's a pretty big note to drop in front of the whole church, you know? So we, you did that in January of what, 14? It was January 19th, 2014. So after church was over, out in the cafe lobby, hundreds of people gathered around. Ezra gets down on one knee and proposes to Virtus. And I was in the back. And I hope she says yes. Yeah, that was that was actually how you ended the phone call. Yeah, <laughs> when I called you, like, well, you can do it, but I hope she says yes. <laughs> I hope you're sure of this yes, man. And she yeah. did say yes. <laughs> Everybody started cheering. Her family, all the people that loves her, started cheering. Yeah. Of course, that's how we got to meet you, you know, and got to know you. And you've been in our life now for almost ten years, yeah. Ezra. Uh, is an adopted son because uh, from the very first Mother's Day, Ezra's been in every F McAllister family photo <laughs> since 2014. I don't know how that even happened to start with. I think I kind of... I like, think you were walking by and we pulled like, you in. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, well, I want to say part of it is is Ryan McAllister's fault because Ryan is like this really cool guy. Yeah, he is. And he was playing keyboards, guitars, singing. And so, I don't know, Mother's Day came up. And I'm like, man, I'm going to photobomb this picture. <laughs> and I just walked up yeah. and stuck my head in. And the next thing you know, you guys realized after yeah. the hey, pictures. Ezra's in the picture, right. man. And so it's it's become like a tradition now on Mother's yeah. Day yeah. and at weddings because, yeah, everywhere. Uh, yeah I got yeah. pulled in at, yeah, Kate's, at Kate's wedding. wedding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when Kate and Taylor got married a couple of years ago, we had Ezra up with the family yeah. for the, uh, yeah. for the family dance and the family picture and, and everything, yeah. man. So, uh, uh, and speaking of Mother's Day, yesterday was Mother's Day. Uh, so this is the day after. If you're watching this later, this is the day after Mother's Day 2021. Um, so uh, we were having a family photo, and Rachel, uh, Miss Rachel said, hey, we got to go find Ezra. I don't see him in the picture. So we had to go look for you yeah. yesterday, man. So the picture can't happen until we find you now. We I was go. surprised, too, because <laughs> I heard Ryan, Ryan, I'm sorry, there's another Ryan, Ryan Roto, yeah, your son-in-law, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I hear Ryan's voice over the over the wall, it's yeah. like Ezra, <laughs> Ezra, and I'm trying to put stuff up and yeah. everything. He's like, "Hey, man, we're waiting for you." I'm like, "Waiting for me for what?" <laughs> and he was like, "We we got to take the picture." Yeah. And so he's just like Liam's, like yeah. my son. Yeah. Um, he's just like, "I'm running behind Ryan." I said, "Hold up, I got to put this stuff up first. Yeah. And so I run outside, and everybody's out there, and just I was waiting, like, man. "Oh man, that's, <laughs> I love y'all, man." It's so great. Well, man, Mother's Day at Journey was just crazy yesterday yeah. bro you know i can't begin to describe first of all you know so many people are coming back to church in person so the building is just loaded down man uh and worship was just you know a 10 uh we did a new song uh christian picked out a new song uh called um it's your nature it's your nature yeah yeah i think it's a carrie job song yes. and uh and veronica sang it yesterday i'm telling you man i was just so moved yeah by the lyrics about he gives hope to the hopeless. You right. Know? Man, it was just, it, it was, I don't know the way the set rolled yesterday for worship. You know, we started here, rolled up to here, brought it down to here, and then we brought it home with rattle. Yeah. And dude, when you did rattle yesterday, boom, it, it shook the house, man. I'm telling you, it was just like, man. you know, uh, so Rachel was on one end and Christian on the other, so they were like, Get in us all the clap in time because most people can't clap in time. I don't know if I know that or not. Actually, Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't clap in time. So whoever's on the stage, I follow whatever they do. And man, when when the clap got going, yeah, you know, all those people clapping in unison and and it, it really was rattled, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my my favorite line in that song, man, is "When has impossible, or when has impossible ever stopped you, man?" <sighs> There's another miracle. That there's another miracle that there. song right there. Oh, oh, oh. Those two songs. Chills thinking about it right now, yeah, man. Right. <laughs> so good. So you led it yesterday. Yeah. So just from your perspective, talk a little bit about Rattle, a little bit about 
you know, leading a congregation in worship and how the spirit, you know, moves through you and touches people's heart? Um, man, that's, I know it's not, not necessarily a thing where I'm speechless, but yeah, I have to first and foremost give God all the glory in that Come on. because so right. some days it, it's, it's hard to, to get up because you, sometimes I just don't even feel worthy to be yeah. in that spot because yeah. it's such an important spot. Yeah. Um, but just like songs like Rattles, Rattle and It's Your Nature. Yeah. It's something about the songs that like literally speak to you. And then some songs that don't even speak to you, you know that they're going to speak to somebody else. Yeah. And you ask the Lord to help you to like disappear into that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Let me be invisible. Jesus yeah. and let people see you because you know if they meet me or you not that big of a deal but if somebody meets Jesus through a song yeah it changes everything man that's it and I want you to know man yesterday when you did the song bro I just felt the spirit of God so strong man you know and I could hear throughout the congregation people clapping spontaneously uh yelling you know just worshiping God you yeah. know it was, it was such a strong strong move of God and when y'all sang that uh that line, Pentecostal fire. Yeah, Doing man. Doing something new. Woo! Man. I'm not sure the right lyrics. I'm not. No, no, you good. But, but the, it was the, like. The part that gets me, that resurrection fire woo! flowing through my veins, uh, man. And it's like, yeah. I, I look at my arm In and my I look veins at. Too. Resurrection fire means that something was dead and now it's alive. Live. Yeah. And that's like flowing through my veins. It's yeah. like the blood of Jesus. Just is ask like the flowing. bones yeah, of Elisha. Yeah, come huh? on, man. <laughs> Oh, the bones. Yeah. Ask the man who fell on Elisha's bones. Yeah. Huh. That's Come a great on. story, man. I think they uncovered Elisha's grave, threw in a dead man. Yeah. And when he hit Elisha's bones, just the anointing on his bones will come on. Come on, man. No, wouldn't, you, wouldn't that be an awesome Woo! thing? That's it, a revival, bro. Come when on. bones are raising the dead. To, to, to have a ministry and a mission yeah. and an anointing that lasted past your death. Yeah. To the extent where it manifests physically, yeah, even through the dead. How many years have gone by? <laughs> Come on, you, man. Is it long enough where he was just bones, man? Yeah, and the power of God was still there. You know, uh, Elisha stayed on Elijah's trail, and I think that's part of the story of the anointing of Elisha because he stayed on Elijah's trail, and their names are very similar, right? But when Elijah was taken up in the whirlwind in the chariot, you know, Elisha was there waiting when the mantle fell, and he. It fell on him. Right. You know, and in the opposite of that, I think, in ministry is Saul's armor. David didn't want Saul's armor. He couldn't wear it. Remember the story about yeah. Saul tried to force it on David? Tried to put put some armor on him. And David him. shook yeah. off and said, hey, I can't wear it. This is not tried. You know, there's a big difference between Elijah's mantle and Saul's armor. You know, when you're pursuing God and it falls on you and it's real versus when somebody tries to force it on you and make you into something that you're not, it's, it's a world of difference, man. And that yeah. anointing rides on you, man. And I don't know, sometimes it's almost unfair. Oh, you know, man. When the, when the Spirit of God moves, you know, and through a song or through a message or, or through a book or, or, or through any ministry that we do, you know, the person sometimes gets the credit, you know, like yeah. the worship leader will get the credit yeah. or, or the, you know, the videographer or the, the drummer or, the, or yeah. the preacher. But, man, all of that is, you know, a distraction from who really gets the credit. Yeah. And like you said. It's all God's glory. It's Jesus, man. Yeah. And for all. some reason, he lets us be in the middle of that, man. You know, like he lets oh, us stand in the middle of that and. It, it, it's just his his presence, and it's so real. You know, uh, I've been watching um, The Chosen. And, man, if you haven't seen The Chosen, uh, it's the gospel told by Dallas Jenkins in video form. It may be the best production of the life of Jesus I have ever seen. If you haven't downloaded the, the Chosen app, you should do it now. You can watch it from your phone or your smart device. Uh, but there is a, a, uh, an extra on one of the videos that Dallas Jenkins, the producer, talks about how it all started. And he tells a story, Ezra, and he says um, God spoke to him through the story of the feeding of the 5,000, mm -hmm. that God could have done a miracle without the five loaves and the 
or the five fish and the two loaves. Or was it five fish or two? I don't remember. But five and two. Right. Fish and loaves. Five, five and two. Yeah. Five loaves. Two he said fish. God could have done the miracle without without the five loaves and two fish, but He didn't. Right. Because He wanted the people to be involved in the miracle. And you said that, and I thought about the miracle was the same but the opposite of the miracle of the manna falling from heaven. Yeah. That was a miracle done then. Yeah. But in this particular instance, the people were a part of the miracle from start to finish. Right, right. God had already given them the supply of the fish and the bread, yeah. but he they didn't have the multiply. Yeah. They he had said, the supply, but the mu- not the multiply. What do you have? And yeah. one of the disciples says, all we have is some fish and bread. And Jesus said, bring it here. Yeah. Sometimes Jesus just wants you to bring you... Bring him your fish and bread. Yeah. No matter how meager it is. Come on, Because there's another miracle. Yeah. In this, in this room. room. <laughs> right. There's another miracle, man. Right. But you know what? God wants us to give him our fish and bread. Our meager lack who will never have enough for God to do the miracle. But when you give it, yeah, he, he multiplies it. Yeah. You know? Um, and, and Dallas Jenkins uh, said, God does impossible math. Man. When you said that yesterday, it was is short, quick, but superb phrase. I could have stopped talking when, right there, man. And and I heard so many people around me. I didn't even have to say it. So many yeah. people around me were like, "Man, he sure does. He does because he does I, impossible man, man." man. It, and I've I've been in a situation yeah. or been in situations where I did not have. I remember, um, and and this is like one of those. Uh, spooky Christian moments yeah. just to throw a slight plug. I like spooky stuff, man. <laughs> I like when the but Lord does cool stuff like that. I man. remember uh, being at a church event and the the host or the guest evangelist that was there, um, you know, sometimes I, we, we, we get to a place and the Lord is really like trying our obedience yeah. more so than anything. Our obedience and our character. Yeah. And they go hand in hand. But, um, he was asking for everybody to pay X amount of dollars towards offering. It was one of those events mm-hmm. where they do that. Some people do it. Some yeah. people don't, sure. um, whether you agree or disagree. But at this particular time, I was there, and I remember I only had like $1.42, $1.48 mm-hmm. in my pocket. I was yeah. broke, man. Yeah. Um, I was like Jaden in that that one video with the little boys. Yeah. Like, Jaden <laughs> broke. I was like Jaden. Yeah. <laughs> broke. <laughs> right. Been there. But so at the end of it, he said, if you didn't have this amount, this amount of this amount, just bring what you have. Yeah. And I just felt like this urging to to yeah. pay what I had in my pocket. And so I took that dollar forty two dollar forty eight and put it in the the plate. And when I left. God's math. God's math. Versus my math. He does impossible. He does impossible. I got a phone call after service. Yeah. Said, hey, you need to come pick up something from uh, Pastor such and such. Yeah. When it, when I picked up the envelope, I went from $1.48 to $50. Wow. You see what I'm saying? So He does impossible Whether math. we like something or not, it's the obedience part yeah. of like following. What do you have? We have two fish and five loaves of bread. Right. Okay, you have this, I got the multiplication. Right. So just pass this out. Yeah. And but he doesn't do the multiplication until you bring the fish. Come on. If we you kept that dollar forty eight in your pocket. Man. And you have a dollar forty eight. Right. And you put it in his hands. Come he on. Does, he does impossible math. Man. He does impossible math. Yeah. So Ezra just graduated from theology school. So, man, you have a degree in theology, man. You're a theologian, bro. Yeah. How's that feel? <laughs> it feels weird. <laughs> it feels weird. Yeah. Um, being the son of a PK, yeah. grandson of a PK, yeah. and having a host of uh, preachers in our family, yeah. Um, it's weird. And at any given time, you could probably be asked anything yeah. or have <laughs> conversations like this, and it's yeah. like, you better know what you're talking about, or you better sit in the corner and like, okay, wait, let me write these. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm the only <laughs> preacher in my my family. Uh, so at all the events, I'm the designator, uh, designated uh, prayer. You yeah. Know, if there's an event yeah. that needs somebody needs to pray, 
<laughs> uh, Doug, you're a preacher. You come over here and pray. Like, right. All right, I'm a, can any of y'all pray besides me? But at your house, man, there are so many preachers yeah, who any, gets called on to say the blessing or the grace. Well, y'all it just all depends it? on who's the head of the house and oh, if that person's a preacher Big Daddy or not. gets the role with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Unless they relinquish the role to you. <laughs> yeah, unless you get delegated. Okay, I'm going to let you pray today. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, that's really cool, bro. Um, so, Ezra, you're also serving in media and you work on Sunday. If you're not leading worship on uh, the stage, you're uh, serving in uh, the control room and doing video production, and I know you lead a lot of events. So tell me where your passion is, worship, video, preaching. What, what is – which one do you love? All? I love all of it. Yeah. Um, not going to lie. When I'm preaching, I'm probably the most at peace. Yeah. Most – not – when when I say what I'm about to say, yeah. uh, hopefully this is taken properly. The most I may get afraid, uh-huh. unafraid. Yeah. The most afraid to do anything on my own or in myself. The most unafraid to say whatever it is that God gives me yeah. to say. Yeah. And God's word is just, it's just when you give it, even if yeah. even in worship. Yeah. I would have to say worship and preaching for me kind of go hand Same. in hand. Yeah. And everything else I love to do because it was like the Lord said, you want to do this. All right, now I'm going to put you in a place where you can do yeah. that. But worship and preaching is yeah. is like right there. I want to yeah. say they neck and neck. Yeah. Man, I've enjoyed talking to you this morning. It's been such a good opportunity to get to know, to have our people to get to know you. And, of course, you're married to Virtus. i got two kids. Yes. Heaven is a freshman at is uh, University yeah, college. Of Miss. Yeah, and then Liam is five. Yes. He's in he's in elementary. He's in a he's a pre K headed to kindergarten. Headed to kindergarten. Yeah, man. their birthdays were late. So So you got a uh, you got a college student and oh. a kindergarten student, <laughs> man. You got both worlds, bro. Yeah. At, at one time. Yeah. 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 That, it's crazy. Um um we were talking about um prior to me getting married. Yeah. Uh, way, way back when I was probably like 2021, 20, yeah. um, I had this dream of my children. And I wasn't, I wasn't like, go ahead. You. I was saying before you got married and before you had kids. Right. Before I got, dream. Yeah. before I got married, before I had kids, Yeah. I had this dream. And in the dream, I knew that the, the two persons were my kids Mm -hmm. i had one that was like really tall and one that was really short and it was like the lord let me know what their genders were the tall one was the girl wow and the short one was the boy yeah and so before i again before i ever got married before i ever got kids wow the lord let me know that i was gonna have a girl and a boy you have two kids yeah and i got two kids and my girl is way older than my son 20 years later yeah god brought it to pass yeah 25 years later yeah yeah so it's it's crazy yeah god is good man all the time got a beautiful family man had a beautiful wife. Verda serves on our team too. She's on our video production team, and uh, we just appreciate all that you guys add to the body of Christ. You know, last time I heard you preach was at Celebrate Recovery, uh, about six or eight months ago. When you spoke, was that about right? Uh, was it longer than that? It may be a little bit longer than yeah, that. Yeah, that's last time I heard you preach, man. You brought such a great word, man, and you you preached a really difficult topic. It was in the whole um, controversy and all the political you know, fighting over. Uh, race wars and all the other stuff that was happening. I mean, you brought such just a, uh, a, a a word from God that addressed all sides and just talked about how our answer is the gospel in Jesus Christ. That's where you did such a great job with that, man. And I just appreciate your heart for the gospel because in the end, the gospel is the only hope of the world. Amen. Man. That's it, bro. Amen. Without Jesus, man, this world's doomed. And, you know, thank God that, you know, Jesus made a way. Amen. Yeah. So, any last comment you want to make, bro? You, you, you want to talk about your favorite uh, superhero? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, who is your favorite? Uh, let's go to DC. Who's your favorite DC uh, favorite universe guy? Who's j- just have to throw it out there? Favorite yeah. DC, and uh, I'm not changing yeah. it because of anything that's going on in yeah. in life. Batman yeah. always has been my favorite DC and superhero. You know, Batman. 
doesn't really have any superpowers. No, but he, he has the one thing that God gave all of us. Yeah, common sense. Brains. <laughs> yeah, seriously. That may seriously. be the best of all superpowers. The the human brain is the most powerful brain on the earth. Hey, remember, <laughs> remember the 60s series with Batman and Robin, Burt Ward, and uh, what was the other guy's name? I can't remember his name now. Uh, Adam West. Yeah, Adam West yes. and Burt Ward. They Adam had the West. really bad special effects. And, yes. You know, boom and pow and... And all the you know big words on the screen. Yeah. Uh, but all, the only thing, the only thing he had was a really cool car and a tool belt. Yeah. <laughs> and he's rich. Yeah, he's a billionaire. <laughs> so, yeah, common sense and money. I guess. Right. right? Come yeah. on, man. That's his superpower, man. And I mean, what just his his situation is a little bit more feasible outside of leaving leaving a trail of blood. Yeah. After he's gotten beaten up or beat up people. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Batman would most definitely be my favorite. Which one's your favorite? Uh, so I'm Superman. Thank yeah, you know, have yeah. been for back when uh, was it George Reeves? Who was the Superman back in the fifties? Uh, that original guy. Uh, I think it was. I can't remember yeah. his name now. But anyway, it was Reeves. Yeah, Reeves, something Reeves. Uh, uh, anyway, I loved him. You know, back the original Superman when I was a little boy. Of course, there's been a lot of you know generations of you know actors who played Superman, right. and then not to mention comics and all the other you know. Um, platform he's been on but I just I like the whole story you know a guy out of place uh in a nation not his own or even a planet not his own you know with a with a great weakness you know kryptonite yeah uh, somehow doing his best to fight and you know he falls in love with a pretty girl and you know <laughs> goes to work as a mild-mannered reporter every day you yeah. know you know is it, wasn't he a reporter yes yeah. he was he yeah was. and uh I just like the whole story you know and then he could uh he could circle the earth real fast and go back in time that yeah. is a really cool superpower man yeah yeah i'm gonna rewind this whole thing and start yeah. over yeah so uh wish we could do that something so no, anyway man uh ultimately bro jesus jesus is the best though man amen you know, i Come love on. the i love the fantasy world but you know the real world is jesus is a superhero uh so we're gonna wrap it up man you think you want to close out with any thought any no in your heart just um when whenever we're worshiping just worship like you by yourself that's it, just man. you and God, even in the crowd of people. That's just it. now, I think that's what I do on Sundays, or at least I try to do on Sundays. Yeah. Like it's just me and God. I stand on the front row during worship and I sing to the top of my lungs because, you know, I can't carry a tune. But I'm drowned out by all the really good singers around me. But I'm like you, man. Just you know, worship God like you're the only one there. Yeah. You know, hands raised and voices lifted and just full expression of worship. So so we're going to wrap this up. Uh, I'm Doug McAllister from Journey Fellowship Church. I'm glad you joined us today on our podcast and glad, glad to have my great friend here and one of the pastors at our church and upcoming leaders at Journey, uh, Ezra Kaysen III. Amen. Third generation pastor from his family. So uh, thanks for joining us. We had a great time uh, spending uh, the last few minutes with you. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you again. If you're looking for a church or if you're ready to come back, we're meeting every Sunday morning in Slidell. Uh, check us out at journeyfellowshipchurch.com or you can download the app. It's free from your app store, Journey Fellowship Church. Search and you'll see our app downloaded full of resources, uh, back message series, uh, events, find a small group, get connected, find the address, uh, tons of information about us. Also, if you want to watch some more episodes of the podcast and my date my weekly blog is at doug mcallister.com so it's been a joy spending uh the last few minutes with you we love you uh, all of us from here from journey it's great to be with you today and we hope you have a wonderful week and we'll see you next week